The first time they started telling me stories, I had been researching a lot. And, um, I don't know, the energy of the whole existence of this place changed. And, um, finally got a communication. <laughs> I was researching online and, um, by that point I had already like screenshotted like 10,000 things probably. That's why my phone shut down. Um, and, um, when I was researching a few months ago, the power went out. And I called PG&E to check uh, the power outage, and um, they said it was affecting um, 1,200 people in the area. But my house was, the power was still on. <laughs> it was, this, my room was dimly lit for about an hour. Everything, it, my phone was still charging. I mean, I couldn't turn the light on any more than it was turned on. It was turned on. It went down. It went from like 100% to 15%. But it was charged. This room was powered. I don't think it was even, I don't think it was possible to turn on the, I couldn't turn on the TV. I couldn't turn on appliances. They had been shut off everywhere in the house, except for in this room. So, after a couple of hours, well, after about an hour, the power in here actually went, it just died completely. It just slowed, slowly went out after I was frantically wondering what the hell was going on. <laughs> and um, then the power came on a couple hours later, and it was fine. It was everything was good. And then on um, on New Year's Eve of this past year, the one that just passed, um, I had woken up in the middle of the night. It was like just turning New Year's, you know, it was like probably at midnight <laughs> um, or after. It was some um, energy telling me something, but I went to go plug in a fan because it was kind of warm in the room. And I, um, I electrocuted myself like, like it was a birthday present. <laughs> and, um, I, I hadn't been shocked like that. I mean, I, I felt little shocks, you know, here and there. Sometimes if I touch something that I'm not supposed to, you know, but it was like a, like I got stuck on the horse fence again when I was. 18 and pregnant, I got stuck on a horse fence, like a real horse fence at, at the ranch here in Castor Valley. I used to hang out with reincarnated Don Castro as well. <laughs> yeah, at the rancho. So I got stuck on a horse fence then. I got pulled off. I, something pulled me off 30 seconds later. And um, that was terrifying. But I hadn't felt a shock like this since then, but not as strong as it was radiated through my whole body. It was ugh, insane because I plug in that fan every single day, every day, and I've never been shocked. But this was New Year's. And then, so, in the morning, I, I just, you know, I touched my phone and uh, I was on it for about 30 minutes. And it just blank, it just died, just totally malfunctioned like a firework. It was just staying on and there was nothing I could do. I performed surgery on this phone, not this one I'm holding, but on that phone and I couldn't resurrect it. And it's got a million things I, I thought I needed. I don't need them anymore, but, but the energy transferred from me to, um, my phone. 
And um, that's around the time I started shocking people. And even my car, after this one person had gotten into it, this energy was really strong. A long time ago, it was like a year ago. And as, when, after that person, because nobody goes in my car, but he had made like a quick entrance. And like, my car had started talking to me. It would it had, it was like Christine, the movie Christine, Stephen King. It would start shut off it would it had a shock if my energy was too strong or something it would play games with me and um but it, it had a shock problem something had just unloosened itself just perfectly around the battery and I've never had a problem with the car ever in my life it was an electrical problem I mean the the windows would roll up fine but anytime I wanted to start the car or I was mad or something or shouldn't have been driving or something, it wouldn't start. I'd have to physically get out of the car and go like wiggle it, start it with my shock. And it was still like really tight and it was still, it just needed a shock. Like I was jump starting my car. <clears throat> and it did that for a long time. I don't know, like for a year. And now it works fine. Especially after I got that big shock. New Year's shock. It was like my present. It was showing me how strong my energy was. I think my energy was kind of low. Maybe it was reminding me. I think it was trying to shock me back to life. Energy transfers, you see? So that's what I think about all of that. <laughs> They're electric. Electric beings. And that's how it all happened. Just a bunch of scary stories. I hear things move, you know. We went, um, my son and I, my baby Einstein, went for a walk. And the birds in the neighborhood, they're crows, just like they would be. Sam Crow and Van Gogh and all his crows. Um, well, there's Sam Crow, there's three crows, and they've always lived here for years the whole time we've been here. And we talked to them. And the other week we were we were walking up the hill and this one of the crows came and they saw us walking up the hill. He stayed there for about a minute. And eventually he dropped a little a rock, like a bullet. <laughs> I thought it I thought he dropped another bullet. But it was this. It's like a a very hard seed. It resembles, it resembles the copper bullet I found. And we were outside rolling it. And they sit outside and watch us. We were rolling the copper bullet. You know, we were rolling it all over the property. <laughs> they saw us. They know we like balls. They know we like things. They watch us. You don't know what birds are. <laughs> so he dropped that. He dropped it as soon as we got to the top. He saw me looking at him. He wasn't trying to eat it. He held it in his claw. This huge ass black bird. Held it in his claw. Dropped it. Purposely. He was, he was watching. I know how to, I know them. They're like my pets. <clears throat> and remember Jeb's and the birds. He's in the animals. So that's what happened there. <laughs> He's really cool. Um, it's another scary story. And Nikola Tesla. He likes red. He was writing in red for a long time. He wrote to me on my whiteboard through me when I was having an awakening, my awakening. Um, he wrote in red on this whiteboard a long kind of story. And he said he died the night that I met him. And so 
I connected that this morning. No, I think yesterday. But I think Louisa was Tesla's soulmate. She had originally five letters in her name, and he had six. Van Gogh was Vincent. He had seven. So originally, I know she was pregnant. I know she got pregnant or something. When Vincent introduced Louisa to Tesla, I think he fell in love. And, um, He couldn't have kids. There was something wrong down there. I don't know if it was, I don't think it was impotence. I think he really, really wanted kids, but something happened where he couldn't have them. And I think uh, meeting her was just extra fuel. So, and he knew that he couldn't. You know, you can't break that up, you know. Someone saves you. He just, he was a gentleman. He bowed out gracefully and brave. Her name wasn't Catherine. No. Catherine was a friend. And she was married to friends, so they were friends. But Louisa? Nicola? <laughs> oh, well. I mean, not everything is going to be perfect the first time. You have to work at it. But if, um, if I were him, I would have done the same exact thing. I would have wished for things to be better before I brought children into the world. Nothing bad has ever happened to them or me. So I I couldn't have asked for a better time to start my army. It just wasn't time. It wasn't the right time back then. A lot of stuff needed to happen to clean up the energy of the planet and get a lot of systems that were going, a lot of destructive people and systems that they had in place. They needed to be bombed out a little bit. So that's how that works. <laughs> At least we have nice, clean energy. It's cleaning. It's getting clean. <laughs>